Coming up on Oakdale Update, we'll talk with State Representative Leon Lilly. We'll get a preview of the Oakdale Area Business Showcase, and we'll hear about some upcoming events in the city. Stay tuned, Oakdale Update is straight ahead. Hello and welcome to Oakdale Update. I'm your host, Frank Orsello. This is the City of Oakdale's news and information program about your community. Last month, I interviewed State Representative Leon Lilly. Here's that interview. I'm now joined by State Representative Leon Lilly to talk about a variety of topics. Leon, Lilly, thank you for joining us today on Oakdale Update. Thank you for having me, Frank. We got a couple of things we're going to talk about, but first of all, as you know, the session just got finished. Yeah. Why don't you give us a quick rundown? First of all, I'll ask you, in your opinion, on a scale of one to ten, how would you say the? How would you give the results? One to ten. Ten being the best. <laughs> well, that's a it's a good question. It was a it was an interesting session, and I, I'd be probably not. Not our best session. You know, each one is so different, but right. uh, I'd probably give it a maybe a four or something. Great. Because right. there's some good things that were done, like for Century College, and then there's uh, a lot of stuff that we left on the table, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So did you, how did you, uh, how did you do with the Republicans? Yeah. You know, you're a Democrat, as we know. How did you do with the Republicans? Was it a, is it as um, volatile as it is in Washington, D.C., or, you know, that kind of thing? Is it like that locally, too? Well, it's a very good question, and uh, I, I try to work well with both sides of the aisle as best you can, and, uh, um, you know, you don't punch each other in the nose, you know, because, you know, tomorrow you may be arguing on an issue, and, and tomorrow we're working together to finish, sure. to, to accomplish something. So it's something that I really try hard to, to represent our whole area and try to get things done and realizing I'm in the minority, and yeah. but I, I think you can get a lot done by working together. But yeah, there's times where you, uh, you want to say th things and usually you keep those inside. And, sure. uh, but you, generally people are really good. I, you know, before I forget, what what is your district? Your 43B. Yep. Describe it to us so our viewers yep. know. That's a good question. So uh, a couple <laughs> of years ago, they had redistricting. So now uh, my district is made up of part of Maplewood. It's kind of by the Goodrich Golf Course and then all of North St. Paul and then most of Oakdale. So if you have all the way going down Oakdale, the, all the way to uh, 10th Street. Really? So I have most of Oakdale. And south, then, uh, south and then how far east? So everything, all of Oakdale, going oh, down to 10th. Oh, okay. Yeah, Good so deal. it's pri primarily in Oakdale, uh, it makes up most of the district. Almost yes. two-thirds of it is now Oakdale. Okay. So what are you most proud of for your end of the legislative session? What did you do that you're most proud of? Well, I, I think we can go home and be kind of proud of what we did for Century College and helping the students uh, in the East Metro and giving them opportunities. We were able to get some money for the Fab Lab up there. And, you know, that's really important as uh, folks are looking for uh, jobs and working, you know, in the changing working environment. Uh, I'm pretty excited about the Hadley uh, project that's coming. We were able to get some TED money. Uh, and uh, Hadley, 36 intersections going to be redone here yes. in uh, in 19, and that's a big project. So uh, there's some things that we're uh, pretty proud of. Those are some big, uh, big ones. Are you going to be involved up. at all with the, the uh, Emation property, the development of that? Is the state going to be involved? I guess. Um, <coughs> not not so much. I think that's mostly a Oakdale project. Okay. Oakdale's done a great job. Yep. We've partnered with them as a legislator. I'm pretty proud of the work. We uh, were able to get some real good money, I think, down and uh, and help with the TIF. I mean, I, I go to High V now, and it, you know when you think of how bad that was with the Oakdale sure. Mall and what now, it's just, just what a treasure and that, that senior building there it yep. wouldn't be there and all that redevelopment. So yeah. it's kind of a kind of a neat thing. Oakdale has great leadership, and we work together. Yep. East Metro Training Centers. Uh, Chief Anderson was a big partner in that and getting oh, yeah. that up and running and yeah. uh, that's a huge asset for the whole East Metro. Sure. So. 
Okay, now the other topic we're going to touch on is, uh, just so our audience knows what we're talking about, you fell out of a tree. <laughs> you were up in a tree trimming the tree. Yep. And I mean, and I'm going to say thank God that you're sitting here yep. with us today. But we're thank going to get you. into some details on this. <laughs> and, uh, you know, well, I'm not sure if this is a lesson in safety or if this is a lesson in a miracle because you're here. Yes. I mean, really, I'm just not sure. But Okay, lucky. so let's go back to April 22nd. That's when it happened. And tell us about this tree that needed to be trimmed. What, what made you go ahead? And tell well, us. there's a big old oak tree on my property, and I've cut trees for years, and I thought I was pretty good. I had made about four or five good cuts, <laughs> and then uh, I made a mistake. Uh, the branch came and hit my ladder, and next thing I know, I'm in the air. I got a live chainsaw, and I, I kind of. Well, well, we'll get into okay. that. Let's but just. But, I, but the tree itself was it. How big was this branch you were cutting? It's a pretty substantial. Uh, it, I'd made about four or five cuts, and this one was about this big and uh, maybe like ten feet. But okay. it was a lot. It was oak and heavy. Oh, <laughs> those things are so okay. Did you have it tied? Did you have it roped? Um, I did not, and in hindsight, that would have kind of made sense, but uh, I had it angled. It could have gone this way, this way, or this way, and it swung way back and hit my ladder. And Ooh, okay, would, so no, let's I'm... go. Okay, so uh, <laughs> now again, you mentioned it a little bit, but you've had experienced trimming trees? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, uh, I've done it for years. I kind of grew up, uh, you know, my I did it kind of on the side uh, over family business. I'd cut the, cut the branches and off a of, <laughs> top of trailers and, you know, the you know, drop them down softly. And yeah. so I, I consider myself pretty good, but it can happen to anybody where you make one mistake. Of course. Okay, so uh, <laughs> so what equipment did you have with you at the time? Did you, okay, yep. did, no ropes, obviously. You didn't have a rope? Well, I did, I did have ropes. I decided not to rope okay. this one branch, which in hindsight clearly was a mistake. But sure. uh, um, I thought it, I thought it was chainsaw? going good. I had a nice chainsaw, and that's kind of the one of the last things I remember is getting rid of that chainsaw yeah. as I'm falling to the ground. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, okay, so the the cutting part. You say you were, you know, you were angling it like this, yep. and you know, putting a V in it. Is that correct? So hoping that it's cut down. Like, go ahead, describe it. Tell us. That. Well, I was up there, and I kind of had myself wedged in a corner, and I was cutting, and the the log was supposed to go this direction, mm -hmm. and. Yeah, like I said, it swung back, but uh, it was clearly, if you look at the cut, it was clearly going this way. And it was supposed it, to go uh, that way, correct? Yep, and sometimes they have a mind of their own. Yes. They'll, well, that's, they'll kind yeah, of that's spin a big chunk of wood, too, though. Okay, we got pictures. I'm <laughs> sure they're, they know they're showing them. Um, okay, so you were up about, <coughs> what, 25 feet, was it, or so, yep. at least? Yeah, just a little shy of that. My feet were at 20-some feet. And okay. So I fell to the ground and have... This was a this was a lean-to ladder, right? A tall... Yeah, a nice, nice ladder, and it just <laughs> snapped the dickens out of it. Okay. I'm, I think you can see them in the pictures, yeah. Okay. So what went wrong? I mean, what really... What happened? What went wrong? <laughs> That's I mean, a good question. Did you cut... Uh, you well, I don't know. Well, what it was you? a mistake. I should have roped it, and, uh, you know, people be... It's a good reminder for all of us to be careful. And mm -hmm. yep. Okay. It, so, uh, what do you remember about the fall? You remember? <laughs> well, I remember I have this live chainsaw, and I kind of threw that, and then uh, next thing I know, I'm heading towards the ground, and kind of wake up. My I couldn't breathe. My lung had collapsed, and you know I uh, was begging to be rolled over. I tell you, I have new appreciation for women. I don't know. I You're, I don't no, think men had, could do babies. You <laughs> had people <laughs> there then, huh? You're, I was lucky. My family was there, and then wife uh, and your daughter. I think the North St. Paul Police and Fire in Oakdale. I think even responded to, as well, and. Uh, they took me down to Regions, thank goodness. They have a Regions, trauma, not St. John's. They have a Trauma 1 center. And did you, uh, uh, so you were laying on the ground and you, you broke two ribs or something, didn't you? Yeah, nine ribs. Nine ribs. Oh, <laughs> you didn't do two, you did nine. Yeah. Um, and you have trouble breathing, is that correct? Yeah, I couldn't breathe. My lung had collapsed and I had 20 some fractures. So it's, uh, I got a little hardware store in my arm and mm. in my ribs and then in my pelvis here. Mm. And some metal's going to stay in. They take, they've taken out some already. I've had about six uh, surgeries. Okay, so, so you're, uh, me your, tell me your, your uh, injuries again extensively. You had nine ribs, and, and what yeah. else? So I broke my arm in three places, my uh, shoulder blade, uh, nine ribs, uh, my pelvis, and then the tailbone, and I don't know what else. Did you break a pelvis? No. You did broke your pelvis. Did you break legs at all? Nothing no. on the legs. No legs. Uh, I'm so lucky, really, Frank. I'm I just know. Really, uh, um, okay, so... At the time, how long were you in the hospital then? So I was in the hospital itself for about a week and a half and then transitional oh, care. I wow. literally learned how to walk again. I was in a walker and wheel, wheelchair before that and, uh, you know, a cane for a long time. And This was only just, back in April, right? Yeah, I'm super lucky. Jeez. You know, they tried some new things on these surgeries and, 
and so I was lucky they did some kind of neat stuff on the ribs and then the pelvis. And, oh man! But it. Uh, are you? Are you? Do you think you're fully recovered? Uh, I'm close. I. Uh, I'm. I'm just really. I'm really blessed. I'm so lucky that my family wake? was there, and I'm just so lucky that the emergency people did such a great job. And they said that that East Metro Training Center actually helped. They did some training Is that there. Right. And uh, so that's kind of a neat story that mm -hmm. Oakdale and North St. Paul helped, mm -hmm. and they helped, you know, help respond. And we're talking about that training session, training building on Century and yep. Five, right? Yes, sir. Yes. So they practice. They stuff practice and, kind of these responses, and uh, but I'm I'm so lucky, and uh, you know the regions and the ambulance lakeview uh, uh ambulance took me down there and you said that was trauma they took you to trauma center yeah the trauma one center and uh pretty lucky Jeez. Uh, um okay now do you have any advice for <laughs> anyone thinking of climbing a 25 foot oak tree <laughs> <laughs> well be careful I and mean, things can happen fast and uh you know it uh even if you think you're good really uh uh, be careful if you're going to do it and uh, consider hiring professionals because yeah, there's a reason, absolutely. you know, that they're experts. You know, I made a mistake. I should have. There's so many things in hindsight I could have oh, done Oh, of course, of course. But, we always do that. But, but now, just real quick, when it snapped, it came down, it took the ladder out from under you, correct? Yep. yep. And then I kind of shot me out in the air and I got a live saw and I threw, I threw the that saw and, then, and then I kind of looked at the ground and made some you, decision. I don't know. Did but, you pass out, do you think? Or? Oh, I was out. <laughs> <laughs> when you hit or on the way down, do you remember going down, flying down? I, I don't remember going down, but I, uh, I, I definitely was knocked out on the ground for yeah. a little bit. Oh, jeez. But I can well, yeah. you know, Leon, you know, you and I go back a lot of years. Yes, sir. And uh, I'm just thankful you're here. You're in, and you're in good shape. God, you know, I think that's part of the thing is you were in good shape to begin with. I know you're a biker and all, yep. bicyclist and all that. So I think that really helped a lot, don't you think? I think it does if you can, you know, all of us, if we can be active. And I think it'll help us, you know, do this. And then, uh, like you just said, be, be smart, maybe hire yeah, it out. <laughs> but, I I, so. uh, but I was lucky and uh, a good response, professional help and like the emergency and then the obviously the hospital and then yep. the transitional care. And, okay. But it's, uh, no, we're lucky. It's so nice Wait, to see you, Frank. You're good. Well, same here. Okay, thank you for being on the show and ex at sharing that with us. And I hope yep. somebody learned a lesson out of this. Yeah, is, hopefully people are careful. I hope they do. Just be careful. Leon, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, sir. Okay. It's time for a short break. During the break, we'll list some upcoming events taking place in the city of Oakdale. We'll be right back with more of Oakdale Update in just a minute. Welcome back to Oakdale Update. The Oakdale Area Business Showcase keeps growing in popularity every year. This year it's being held on Sunday, October 28th at the Oak Marsh Golf Course Clubhouse from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. With me today to tell us more about the event are two board members from the Oakdale Area Chamber of Commerce, Bill Burns and Jody Christensen. Well, you two, thanks for joining us. Well, hey, Frank. Great nice to, to see, see you, Frank. <laughs> Now, I understand you're very popular in the community here, so we have Bill Barnes and Judy <laughs> Christensen, is that correct? Burns. Bill Burns. B U. And uh, Judy Christensen. Judy, yeah, I'll go with that one. Judy, not? is that okay, yeah. Judy? Uh, yes. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. So listen, uh, all seriousness mm -hmm. now. Jody, I think you started this, didn't you? Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna give credit where credit is due. Bill actually said, you know, we, we talked a little bit about this whole concept and Bill got the ball, ball rolling at the time and said, this is what we should do. And it, it actually ended up that the venue we were at originally, the only day available for the whole year was Halloween. 
And we started thinking about it and thought, well, why not? That's a great idea. It's a great way to get families to come and see what's available to them in Oakdale, and that's how it started. So. Okay, so what was the purpose of the, the, the whole thing? The, well, the whole the community of Oakdale and the surrounding area needed a venue, I think, and Jody and I discussed it at length as far as getting the businesses together to get uh, the residents to know what kind of businesses do we have in the area. And we have a lot, but uh, there was no venue to do that. And again, Jody and I were able to come up with a, a date and a place. And uh, it's just with Jody's leadership, it's just kept going and going and the success is unbelievable. She's usually pretty good at when she puts her mind to something. Right. Thank she, you. Thanks, thanks for the she really, she, Did you know she was volunteer of the year this last year? Fred, I did not know that. <laughs> you did it? No. Oh, darn. Yeah. She, yes. she was. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So at the time now, this is probably about two years ago, does that sound right? Four. Yeah. Four. This Give will be time. our fourth year. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, fourth year. I know, it's really gone fast. I mean, it's Is it really time travel for you or <laughs> yeah. is it just <laughs> something that's normal? Yeah. Four years already? <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. I know, it's crazy. How time it? flies. Yep. Um, okay, so um, how did you, I mean, what did you two do? Just sit down and just say, hey. Were you president of the uh, Oakdale Area Chamber at the time? Yes, I, I was. think you were. Yeah. And why did you pick on Jody to help you out with this? Jody, again, as you know, is a great resource for everything in the community. So mm -hmm. uh, she was my number one person to go to. And again, like I said, with her leadership, she took that and she had great ideas. She had great people behind her to help her uh, through the Lake Elmo Bank. Yes. And um, again, we couldn't have imagined that it had gotten to this this right. size right now. Right. So you know what I forgot to ask you is uh, for our audience, what do you do for a living and what do you do? What do you do for a living? I'm going to start with Jody. Let's start with Jody because I think hers is a little more. You think so? I think so. Yeah, we Go just ahead, don't Jody. cut hair. Go ahead, Jody. I work at Lake Emma Bank. <laughs> yes. I've been there for 36 years. No way. Yeah, way. Long time, but I just couldn't imagine being anywhere else. So I just, um, I've been very blessed. I started out in the um, Lake Elmo um, branch and 20 years ago, next July, we uh, moved to Oakdale when they opened and I've been managing the branch ever since and I'm vice president of um, relationship management, which simply means that I care about our customers and if they have any issues or um, I'm there to help them and take care of them, and, and uh, it's a great job. I'm really lucky. A lot of community involvement, which is my favorite part. Well, so. you know what? Uh, and the bank has been very good about very good letting you do all this, yep. right? And we are really a true community bank. Um, everything we do centers around what we can do in our community, yes. and uh, and I'm really proud of that. That's probably one of the, the key factors of why I've stayed well, as absolutely. long as I have. And so. they help you. I mean, they never quibble about you taking time that off. One I mean, I've, called, I've been to the bank many times, and you're yeah. never there. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks so for I'm saying that. I'm sure my bank president will love to hear I'm that. Thank you. I'm certain <laughs> that. Okay. Well, he usually goes, and he's got a hood on. So they usually <laughs> yeah. usher him out yeah. right away. So, Bill, do, yes. you, do you do anything constructive? In, in I like to think so, Frank. What would you that know, be? I wanted to achieve something a little bit more than cutting hair. Yeah. And so what? I've got my own insurance agency right you here do. in the is city that, of Oakdale. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. You've been here for a long time? I've been here for a long time. Been in the resident of Oakdale for 32 years. Mm. And uh, the agency's been open for quite a few years. So I just love it there. And I get a chance to uh, meet and greet a lot of uh, residents and business owners of uh, the city of Oakdale. Well, I remember uh, going back four years, apparently, uh, when you were president of the chamber. I, I have to admit, and Jody and I, we were both presidents at one time. Mm -hmm. You did one hell of a job. Yep. I have to tell Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you, I Frank. Yep. One of the best. Well, and mm -hmm. I left it in good hands, and now there's going to be another transition, I think, mm -hmm. in the next month or two for right. another yes. president to step in and give their energy. Uh, and we're going to have energy. Another, another good one. Okay, yeah. so uh, the first four years ago, let's go back four years. Okay. Where did, the, where did you hold that? Well, at that time, it was at the Prom Center, which is now in Wood Oaks. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we try to utilize different venues throughout the city of Oakdale and, and also giving light to, to what they do. So we did two years at Inwood Oaks, which was formerly the Prom. And this will be our second year now at Oak Marsh um, Golf Course. Okay, what, what, how was the transition going for me? <laughs> you know what? It was wonderful. And, and it's always a little scary when you do that. But Steve and his group at Oak Marsh are 
absolutely amazing and they're extremely helpful and we actually took over the whole place. Um, there's separate rooms and we took over the whole top upstairs for all the vendors and um, and then downstairs is where they, they serve food and we have face painting and balloon artist and um, so it is definitely a fun family event. Kids come dressed up and trick-or-treating at every single booth. And So it's again it's going to be on Halloween? It'll be, it's always the, the Sunday before Halloween, so okay. Halloween I believe is on a Wednesday okay. or Thursday, so it's always the, the, but our first one was actually on Halloween, which was I kind of I remember that. Nice. Um, yeah. So how many, about how many people attended it, well, attended it, yeah. Well, we had, was it close to a thousand? Actually, yeah, we had 2,500 people coming you through did. last year. That would be close yeah. to 1,000. Our <laughs> first year was 1,000, which I, even then, I mean, that was that. my that. most nervous moment was opening those doors thinking, is any gonna, anybody going to be here? And there were people outside waiting. And last year, it was about quarter two, we had people outside waiting, and it was so busy the first two and a half hours, I'd say. That um, now, was I was crazy. in Europe last year when you had this, so I missed it. <laughs> First time I missed, I want you to know that. I know, you Thank normally you don't miss any yeah. free candy. I don't miss, <laughs> Obviously. miss free anything. <laughs> I, I don't, don't want to miss say anything, anything free. <laughs> yeah. but, um, so um, was it crowded, though? I mean, I'm thinking that it's a lot smaller than well, the... Well, uh, I have a booth there yep. myself, and it was just a constant flow of people. It was. It wasn't. There wasn't usually any bottlenecks anywhere, but it was really nice. People would just keep coming by the booth, mm -hmm. and they'd ask about what you're doing, and and look for the candy and the kids were cute yeah. and dressed up and that some of the adults were dressed up in mm -hmm. costume also. So they joined in. That was yeah, so a lot of the vendors dress up in costume which okay. is really fun to see too. How many uh, how many uh, booths did you have last year? Last year we had 58. We're actually going down to 54 this year. We want to leave a little bit more room for people to get through in one of the areas. So mm -hmm. um, you know we we tweak it every year. The first year we actually had 75. We have gone down some changing venue but it's not about that as much as just getting people to see what's available to them and, and coming together for a family event in Oakdale. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if we go back to prom someday, we probably would increase those numbers. But Well, it's um, going to be interesting. Uh, the prom is new owners, as you said. Right, and, uh, right. We'll see. Um, I feel, I think, and of course I wasn't there last year, so I can't say for sure, but it seems to me there was more space in the prom? There, there probably is, but it's, um, Oak Marsh, as you know, is really, um, it's all windows. And so it was bright and oh, yeah. airy. That made a big good difference. Point. Good point. Um, so that was really kind of fun. So I think it's, I think it's a really good idea to change up the venues just because it, it highlighted the prom now in Wood Oaks. It highlights Oak Marsh. It tells people right there just by the venue what, what, um, they have available mm -hmm. to them. So, yeah. So, uh, how are you doing this year? How many, uh, how many booths do you have? We are completely sold out, have been since July. You have. Yep. So we have a wait list right now of, of, um, businesses that want to be a part of it in case somebody drops out. Typically that does happen at least once somebody, you know, something happens and I just get on my list and call them right oh, away. Oh, good. good yeah. So. What does it cost to have a booth there? It's 250 for a business and it's 150 for a nonprofit. And we do have several nonprofits. We also have several booths that we give away um, um, that we, you know, to support things, causes that are going on. Mm -hmm. For instance, our holiday helping hands um, for, through um, the chamber. We want to make sure that they have a booth. Um, we give one to um, uh, the vets. Um, so there's a few that we do. We just honor these different groups and 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 uh, have booths there for them. So. Okay. And Bill, do you? Are, what do you do while you're there? Do you mill around and try and? Well, what I try to do is I'll be at the booth for as much as I can. Otherwise, I'm going around and, like Jody does all day, she's <coughs> going around making sure everybody has anything they need. If there's a shortage of candy, right here, she's the queen of sweet. Yes. Aww. So she'll uh, <coughs> make sure that you got it. So. Yeah. That's where I found previous years when you were there, you did follow her. I did. When you did have, because you're always candy. looking for candy. It was free. It was, it free. was free. It yeah. was free. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And One additional it. thing that we do have this year is we're doing vendor bags. And I've heard from the other vendors that they're so busy during this um, event that they can't get around to each other and say, hi, I'm Bill oh. Burns, hi, I'm Jody Christensen, this is what I do. So what we're going to do this year is we're having vendor bags and the vendors will put in um, maybe a trinket or something fun for the other vendors and then um, some marketing materials saying, you know, this, I'm here at this event and this is what I do. Um, Brandon Newman from um, Edward Jones is heading that up for oh, us. Oh, yes. so, yeah. Good yep. deal. Good so deal. That's good. So this is good. And I'm telling you, this uh, Oakdale area is, I don't, it's second to none, isn't it? I mean, it's hard. It really is. The I mean, people that Frank, you got to look at, there's 28,000 people. 
in Oakdale. And in the next few years, it might grow up to another 5,000 yep, yep. with the addition of the uh, all the new homes up around uh, North Imation, mm -hmm. up around there. Right. Imation? Yeah. Imation, yeah. yeah. It was it imitate, what? It's <laughs> imitation, Im oh, imitation. All right, all right. Or Slumberland yeah, Slumber is what you want to call it. And I'm going to correct both of you. It's forefront. Now it is. Yes, okay. it is, yeah. Okay, well, listen. As we know Jody's right. <laughs> Always. Right. Yeah. Okay, so thank God we're out of time now. So, no kidding. Oh. Yes. I was going to tell you about this fishing trip I had planned. And <laughs> we're going to pass on that one. Okay. Uh, some all other right. time when we have more time, we'll, yeah. we'll probably. Uh, big fish. Real big fish. We're, we'll work on that. But okay. anyway, we got to go here. Uh, we're out of time. But uh, I want to thank you two for all the time and energy you put in, especially you, Jody, Volunteer of the Year. <laughs> thank you. Wanna... Volunteer of the Year? Was yes. that really recently? Oh I want to thank gosh, you. you I mean, really, you guys, both you guys. And Grand even, Marshall. Even you. Thank you. Sometimes you're questionable, mm -hmm. but generally speaking. <laughs> and coming you... from you, I know that's a compliment. <laughs> it is, indeed. Just to okay. care. We got to go. Okay. All right. Thanks for joining thank us you, today. Thank you, Frank, for having you us. Thanks, back. Frank. That's all we have time for this month on Oakdale Update. For everyone at the City of Oakdale, thanks for watching. <laughs>